Well, good morning, guys. Welcome to another episode of Let's Build That Sawmill. Today we got a series of things we got to do. And it's like, you know, those nitty gritty items. We've got to accumulate enough material to finish the inside of the sharpening shed, or I like to call it the man cave, or I guess it's a she shed. We got to do some of that. And uh, I believe today we're going to be picking up our fish for our pond. We got some tree planting to do. We got a whole bunch of stuff to do and we got to get it done. So buckle up. Let's get her done. A little bit of fabrication time. This is the, uh, the back end of my tractor. And this is a little thing that we've made up to uh, actually haul the dump trailer. It's a bunch of welded brackets and some metal pipe. Actually, it's solid metal bar that's welded into the frame. So that, that allows me to have a trailer hitch on the back of this thing. So we created this thing already. This thing has been has proven itself extremely useful for uh, towing a dump trailer and actually towing the log lift. But what I'd really like to have is a, a winch or like a skitter loader. So what I'm going to do is I've got a plan. I've got some square stock fits right in there. It's got no holes in it. So it's uh, it's carte blanche really, because all you got to do is drill a hole and then you put a pin in it. So my plan is to create a uh, basically a winch mount. So my, my plan is to screw that on there and then weld this guy. This is like your everyday run of the mill 3,500 pound winch. I got this thing from Princess Auto. And uh, that's the plan is to weld it essentially to there. Maybe bolt it, maybe bolt it and weld it. And uh, that allows me to have winch control. So I could actually just winch tree trunks out of the forest. I think that'll sit well. And then my battery sits right here. And then I got my remote control that will be able to control it right from the back of the track. I don't even have to get off. Found another piece. This is actually thicker wall. I had originally this stuff, which is thinner wall, and this is thicker wall. I figure I'd probably go with the thicker wall stuff. I'm gonna weld it. Weld it first, stick it in, put a hole in it, put a pin in it. Well, it looks a little bit like a spaghetti factory, but uh, I think it I think it works. I haven't tried it yet. Let's try it. That's the inaugural out out. Oh, that's in in. That's weird. It's labeled backwards. In is out and out is in. That should work pretty good. Crazy, or yeah, crate. That I've been wanting to do for a while, and it's an old uh, chicken crate that I modified slightly to fit in between there, and then I use that multi-hitch thing to hook up. The winch is here, and uh, I've got the trailer hitch there, and everything is secure in there, and then I got places for my gas, my oil, my chainsaw, my ax, my felling wedges. And this thing is going to be like ideal. There's no storage when it uh, when you get a tractor. It's kind of like they just expect you to never get off and do anything. They just expect you to just push stuff around and then poof, you're done. Magic. But uh, in reality, you have to get out off every once in a while to do stuff. And you generally need some tools. So that actually fits really nice in there. And uh, the reason why I actually picked plastic is because usually you've got sharp things. So if you got metal, it'll dull and everything. So chicken crates are probably the most indestructible thing you can imagine so what i did is i cut it off and then i zip tied it all together i may uh i don't know how depending on how well those hold up i can uh, add some more metal or even wire wire it together but as you can see i just use the end 
shrunk it. There's what's left of it. But I've I have like half a dozen of these things, and I don't. I only need like two. And uh, yeah, I was just like, what am I ever gonna do with this thing? But that works awesome. And you know what's interesting? It matches. <laughs> well, let's go see if we can find a log and pull it out of the bush. All right. Well, here we're at the tree in question. Doesn't look very big. When you get up to it, it's uh, it's a monster. Dead as a doornail, and it's starting to shoot the branches down everywhere. You can kind of see a pile here, and uh, as you can see, the the size of it is pretty big. I'm gonna try to drop it that away. And uh, there's another poplar that's up there or aspen I believe and it's kind of gonna take out that one as well I believe and that's okay because I gotta take that one down too this is gonna take a minute this tree is actually bigger than the bar so I have to go from both sides but uh, it's gonna land right about here and hopefully take this tree out at the same time That is a massive tree. So what I did, because it was leaning, I actually uh, did a plunge cut. As you can see all my thing, because my bar is not quite big enough. There's my hinge, about an inch, and a bit of wood. That guy's, that guy's a huge tree. And as you can see, I walk along it. You can see, split the uprights. Bent that one over a little bit, but otherwise it's pretty not that much collateral damage those trees given enough time will shoot branches off the size of you know your leg so you want to take those down as they're dead you can see the top there is no top on it see all the barks coming off but yeah that's pretty much the story of the ash tree right there it's a shame to take them down. I really like trees. I just don't like ones that come down unexpected. So that guy will heat up a lot of house for a really long time. Not to mention it'll be used for uh, for other stuff too. So we got her all cut up. And now we're at, uh, well, getting these logs out. So this one right here probably wouldn't be that hard just to not even use the new contraption. But uh, it's kind of a good log. And the idea behind this thing is to keep them off the ground. I can't lift them. So this is what this thing's going to do. It's my log arch. So that's going to pick it up off the ground. These are the ones that I need the winch for. They're kind of downhill. You guys can't really see how far downhill that is. Cameras don't do it justice. But that's the kind of guy I need there. So we'll try it with the easy to access one. And then the more difficult ones. I think we're going to have to go back to the welding board. As you can see, this thing does not like this. It's, uh, it's turned into a noodle. It's a great, this thing's a great bender. And uh, guess what? My weld is holding up beautifully. It ain't moving. Um, this pipe is just too weak for this application. It probably needs a gusset that goes from here to here, a solid pipe, everything else. And then this thing should also kind of not move. It should be just attached right there at the pivot point because what's happening is it's kind of going off to the side but in theory this thing is working relatively well if this didn't bend and this was solid right up here which that's my next step this thing is 
gonna work amazing. I'm gonna muscle this guy back up to the mill because that's my that was my plan for the day is to get these logs to the mill. That one I'm gonna wait for another day. It's up off the ground. It'll be safe from rot. But this is the one. That's the one that I want right there. Lena, what do you think of the floor? It's cool. Is it? Yeah. What do you think? What is it made out of? Wood, probably. Wood, probably. Well, can't you see? Solid, eh? Just getting ready to install the uh, solar aeration on the ponders. This is uh, this is a bracket that, uh, that comes with it, and uh, you're supposed to mount it on a two in a bit pipe I don't have that I have this guy here it's a long pipe but it's kind of it doesn't have enough girth so what my plan is to take this guy this guy fits nice I don't have that guy there's set, there's set screws over here which screw in so I'm gonna weld this piece to that piece and that'll act as a bushing that's a old uh, I think it's an oil tank fill valve so that'll just ask, act as a bushing Now that guy can slide onto there, clamp on to the bracket. You don't need to buy a really thick walled pipe. Use what you got. Part of my forest management plan is a reforestation and diversification. I've got, there's a 10 Norway spruce right here. I'm, uh, I'm adding to around the pond area to control erosion and uh, reintroduce some new species that are from this area I've got a crazy amount of white pine kind of planted up at the top so this is kind of uh, I've, I've kind of speckled them inside there I got 50 of them there's just 10 that's gonna go down here I've got another 10 left to plant but uh, these guys here if you guys are looking for trees a lot of jurisdictions have uh, like a reforestation program that you can look into free trees so that's what these guys are Aren't they beautiful looking little saplings is a conifer a sapling as well as a, as a, I guess they're all saplings, baby trees. So Chris is just raking out an area down there. We're gonna plant them along. We planted some cedars, which are doing really well as well, some balsam. So Norway spruce, that's where it's at. Look at that little baby tree. Little guy will do good there. We got a bunch of other ones. You can already see the greenery coming up. All right, now that we got our new trees planted, we can work on our old trees. We got a series of dead standing ash trees that are preventing, well, I think they're part and parcel preventing the wind from hitting our wind turbine. We're gonna create somewhat of a wind tunnel by getting rid of those, uh, those dead trees that are right directly behind. I don't know if you guys can actually see those dead trees, but uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take those down and it'll give us uh, nice path for the air we've got our uh, solar aeration set up you can actually see the full build on that solar aeration set up on my brother's channel the wooded beardsman if you want to check them out i'll give a little bit more of a tour a little bit later on in this video because uh, tomorrow we're actually picking up the fish so we're kind of buttoning up everything so we don't have to disturb them once the fish are in but we want to have everything proper aeration because this year we're going to grow some trophy trout Good? Sure. Well, you hold on to that and I'll stretch it out. I'll do uh, 
15, 20 feet or something. So this is the stone. This is where the air comes out. Look at that, dude, right away. Holy smokes. I didn't expect that. I want it to be warm. <laughs> it's not warm, it's freezing, but it is cool. You have to get another one and put it in the hot tub. <laughs> you know what? I wonder if you could split it and put it in the tub. You'll feel like an air tub. It's cloudy out too. That is an amazing amount. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, let's knock some trees down, get these things out of the way. I got my, my trusty tractor with my winch set up. So the idea is to uh, knock, you can see those trees, they're all dead. And uh, yeah, they're just kind of standing there. They're kind of ugly. And uh, well, you know, winter's coming, you always need firewood. You guys are wondering what this wide stuff is for this is the uh this is going to be the ceiling and uh, i've milled just enough of it it's about five eighths of an inch thick and that's going to be the wide plank ceiling and then i've got pretty much all of my wall cladding which is uh six by uh three quarters of an inch thick so i have it all kind of stacked up there it's ready to go really when you're building stuff it's it's the material getting it all prepared it's kind of what takes the time, but once you have it all kind of sorted out, you can uh, really get at her. This little guy here is the uh, the Particle Max Mira Safety Goggles. They've got some pretty neat stuff on their website. The link will be in the description below if you guys want to pick yourself up a safety mask. Uh, I guess it's a gas mask. There's all sorts of different cartridges depending on which, uh, which ones you want. I went for the particulate mask because I'm not really concerned about, uh, you know, nuclear fallout, stuff like that. Um, I figure if that's going to happen, we're all going to, it's going to be bad news bears. But I know a real threat is particles attacking me. And apparently my own nose. Anyways, ah, uh, so what I'm going to also do with that thing is I'm going to give this guy a little bit of a sand. Because um, I want to really see what the true colors are on this. Cause it's got the uh, the original patina, which is the uh, pretty much mortar, and now it's got a nice coating of dust that came flying around. Just gonna give the I got the old belt sander and uh, like a 36 grit on there to really hog it down and uh, and give us a nice kind of finish. It's kind of cured, and uh, once that's done, I can give it a top coat of something to like as a protectant. Uh, but again, it is a it is a man cave saw so like man cave she shed sort of thing so we're not really that concerned about uh you know like that piano finish we're more looking for something that is a uh you know a, a rustic look and uh, sort of protect it kind of keep the uh, water from penetrating in let's get started sanding because this might take a minute but i do have the old makita belt sander so that should uh make quick work of it all right, what I found was actually this thing, uh, the grinder with a uh, sanding disc on it seems to work out really well because this thing is round and uh, I can actually just hit it with the uh, the sanding disc because this thing's round as well. It fits perfect as opposed to the belt sander which kind of goes over the surface. So if I go hit each individual puck, I can smooth it out. I'm actually going to take the guard off to allow me to get a little closer because what's happening is as it wears out, it's uh, it's starting to give these little burn marks on the cookie. Uh, that's not a really big deal, but once uh, if you can get kind of on a perfectly flat angle, you won't get the burn marks. Okay. What are you saying? Uh, I think it looks pretty neat. Doesn't it look cool? I can't even see it. Is it windy out there, isn't it? Look at your hair. Look at your hair. Your hair's all windy. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, we're gonna take a little bit of a break from sanding anytime you're doing like such a large area. It's good to take a break every once in a while. Let your the feeling in your hands come back. Any kind of like repetitive vibration makes my hands go numb. I don't know if they make your hands go numb, but they certainly do mine. Anyways, the other day we ended up going to uh, Lyndon's uh, fish hatchery in New Dundee and we collected our fish. If you guys want to see the detailed video, it'll be on my brother's channel, The Wooded Beardsman. He, uh, well, we actually both went out there and picked up our fish and uh, he's told me he's going to, uh, he's cooking me up a snack for the, uh, for the afternoon, he's got some wild edibles. Yeah, I think he picked up, and we're gonna pan fry some trout. So let's uh, let's check it out. What's the verdict? <clears throat> Meat and rainbow trout. Watching rainbow trout. <laughs> it's like it's like <clears throat> trout uh, exception. If if only the if only the trout knew what I was doing, if they were self-aware, they'd be like, they'd shake their heads in the water, like yeah. that's not right. <clears throat> They're doing good though. Swimming around in not circles, they're just kind of lazily hanging out. They haven't quite learned that there's danger from above, so they're pretty high up in that water column. But they're they look like pretty happy. I think there's uh Lois. Looks gray. Yep, she's a big girl. I guess while I'm down here, I might as well take a little bit of a tour of our recent acquisition. It's the Condor's DC200 solar aeration system. That's from naturespondcare.com. And uh, we set it up the other day actually on my brother's channel. My brother's well, he, you know, he enjoys the pond. And uh, when he's excited about something, I kind of let him have it. So he's, if you guys want to see the installation uh, video, it's on his channel. But uh, you know what's, it's interesting. The sun just kind of went behind a cloud. So it's not running at its full rip, but this is the, uh, this is the beast right here. This is uh, a full solar setup. There is a pump sits right here it runs you can hear it just running away right now and it pumps down a rubber hose into an aeration stone down at the bottom of the pond to ensure our fish have enough oxygen this year we've got basically a uh, well we've got a three setup right now we've got uh, old aeration brand new aeration which works like 10 times better and we also have our windmill but it's not windy right now so it's good to have all of the different ones in order to uh, ensure that our fish are happy, healthy, and most of all, are able to breathe. You can hear it ramping up. The sun is getting a little bit brighter. You can see my fish. I think the fish want me to feed them. They're actually swimming. They're swimming closer to me. That's interesting. They're, 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 I think they're, they know that humans feed them. They've been bred that way. But you can see them clear as day. If I have polarized sunglasses, I could probably see pretty far into the pond. Mr. Pelican here gonna scare away all the other pelicans. Their frogs are back. They've been making frog babies. So that'll hatch into a whole bunch of tadpoles and then we'll have a bunch of frogs. You can see how clear the water is. Look, the fish are coming. Look at that, you can see the fish swimming. Chris put some uh, special fish in here. They're 15 pound rainbow trout. They're old, uh, the breeding stocks. So we got a male and a female in there. Uh, you can't really see them right now. Those are just the regular size ones. But uh, you can see if the big one comes around here, he's a monster. There's a there's male and a female. The male is slightly smaller than the female, but the, oh, they just realized I was here. And uh, yeah, there's our, our trophy. Was it, uh, what's the names of them? Clark Kent 2 and, uh, Clark, Spence. Clark, Clark, Clark Spent 2 and Loose Lois. There we go. We can't see. Oh, there, there, there is Luce Lois. Can you see her? She's right there. She's coming around. There she is. There. Oh, oh, she just, you see there, she's that, that kind of the lighter colored one. 15 pounds, that one. That's a huge fish. And we got our wood ducks sitting there. I'm gonna try a little bit of an experiment. I saw these guys on, uh, actually they came on Facebook and they wanted to sell me like a pack of 10 for like 60 bucks. And I was like, nah, it's too much. They're like, it's like a clamshell looking thing that's got like a like a ball. And I was thinking, why don't I just take like a, like a kid's bowling ball and cut a couple of holes and it snap together. And then I was like on Amazon and they've got like a 50 pack something like for like 12 bucks. I'm like, nah, just order them. And what they're designed to do is to allow regrowth 
actually to clone a tree. That's what that's essentially what you do is you're clipping this guy on a uh, a branch. And in this case, what I'm doing is I'm clipping it on to a uh, an apple tree that's deep in the forest. It doesn't get enough sunshine and I don't want to cut down all the other trees. So what I want to do is I want to clone this tree. So what this allows me to do is to create a genetic a genetically identical tree. So I know this tree does well here because it's it's like it's probably 60 years old or something like that. Uh, and what I'm going to do is actually clip it on one of these suckers, which generally speaking when a tree starts sending off suckers It's not doing the greatest either. It's it's you know It doesn't have enough of something either well nutrients in the ground or sunlight or something like that So if you have suckers your tree usually what you do is you clip the suckers off But what I'm gonna do is actually clip on this guy in Onto the sucker in order to have roots grow at the base and then I'm gonna clip it off and replant it somewhere Well, that's my theory anyways. I've never used these before and uh, I'm gonna give it a whirl. I am by no means an expert at this, so I'm going to uh, give it a whirl. So my plan, what you do is you cut around the tree branch, and you wanna get into the cambium layer of the tree. And I'm gonna go all the way around. You first wanna pick a tree that's got suckers I think or you can do it on a branch if it actually works then you slice it and then what you're gonna do is peel peel it off I don't know if I got down far enough Wilson's look liquid root stimulator with fungicide I'm gonna coat the uh, where I probably should have a little brush for this I'm going to take some dirt from the ground right where right by it because I know this tree likes this dirt clip it on the tree without losing all my dirt As you can see that's clipped on the tree and then what you do is you keep this thing moist for 20 days and in theory when you open this guy up you'll have a bunch of roots you clip it here right here you clip it and you'll be able to plant it in the ground as a brand new standalone tree I'm a little skeptical we'll check back in 20 days. Be sure to check back in. You can see I've done this sucker here, come out the base of the tree, and then I did this one here. Again, these are not normal. They should not be sticking out the base of the tree down that low. You can see the top of the tree is pretty gnarly. It's pretty shaded. I'm hoping this tree will do a little bit better once uh, the ash die back because there's a whole bunch of ash that are right next to it. So they're going to get a lot more light this year because all the ash died. Well, that took un just under six hours. <laughs> did I think it was going to take that long? No, I did not. Um... So yeah, now we're gonna coat it because I don't wanna just let it sit there. I've got it pretty clean. Uh, ideally, once you've coated it, uh, you wanna do a light sand and then coat it again. I'm not sure how this stuff's gonna work. I looked at some oil-based uh, varnishes and uh, it was 120 bucks a gallon. I don't know when that happened, but uh, I ended up finding some uh, reuse water-based stuff. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of uh, water-based varnishes and paints and stuff so like it says semi-gloss crystal clear waterborne diamond wood finish for floors well this is a floor this is wood well it's mostly wood i'm gonna put it on and uh hope for the best worst case scenario i just have to sand it again right oh i've got my finger let me see you got my finger you get you get complacent with grinders i think i cauterized it uh yeah so let's uh let's give this thing a Let's give this thing an old uh, coat and uh, see how she dries. It's really gonna make the grain pop out of it. I don't know if you guys can see. Is this the angle with the sun's coming or the, the light's coming in? It kind of makes it look white, but I can assure you it is very, um, it's very, very cool looking. So let's, uh, let's get a coat. I'm gonna, probably gonna pull up all that sand and stuff that's in between the, uh, in between the, the things and actually coat it. It's actually extra grippy, but that'll, uh, that'll kind of go away after the first coat because you just light sand all the sand off and then you give it a vacuum i guess i could give it a vacuum now actually i kind of want to seal it in all right 
Let's give this thing a coat. Here goes nothing. Well, there you have it. That's uh, pretty much color corrected. I changed it a little bit. Um, but yeah, look at that. That uh, turned out really, really nice. I did not expect it to uh, look that nice. As you guys can see, it's got that nice semi-gloss finish. There still needs to be another coat on this. But uh, that's that's beautiful. You can see it's kind of it's taking a little bit longer to dry up in the, uh, the concrete area. So yeah. I'm really pleased with that. Another coat. As you can see, it didn't sink that far into the cookie, and I think that's because we did the uh, the oil varnish to begin with. But as you can see, it's a pretty darn nice flat floor. I'm very pleased with that. Well, guys, I anticipated getting a little bit more done in this episode, but uh, I'm pleased with the results. Um, you know, you can't rush the saws of a haul. But uh, that being said, I do promise the next episode is going to be the interior finishes of the Saws Mahal. I've got to, I've got pretty much all of my materials lined up. Everything, all the ducks are in a row and uh, we're gonna get her done next time. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh, join me in the next one.